today we will discuss about the brain stem this is the brain this is the spinal cord this is the stem the stem is connecting the brain with the spinal cord this stem what we call brain stem brain stem made up of three parts see here here this part is midbrain from here to here this is pons from here to here this is medulla oblongata see here two peduncles are there here one peduncle here one peduncle these two peduncles are part of midbrain so what are these cerebral peduncles these are the peduncles which are connecting the cerebrum with the pons so these two are the cerebral peduncles actually i am not disturbing these structures because here circular villus is present very clearly that's what i am not disturbing see this is one peduncle and here another peduncle so this is a part of the midbrain then from here to here this is the pons then from here to here this is medulla oblongata these three parts are unitedly called as brain stem first we will discuss about the medulla oblongata then we will discuss about the pons and midbrain first if we take the medulla oblongata see it is extending from lower margin of the pons see this is the pons this is the lower margin of the pons from the lower margin of the pons to the level of emergence of first cervical nerve see here this is the lower margin of the pons and here emergence of first cervical nerve so from here to here this is the medulla oblongata it is truncated cone shape or it is bulb shape because of that only some terminology you can see bulb or paralysis and all it is bulb like or it is pyriform in shape and it is around 3 cm long 2 cm wide 1.25 cm thickness if you observe the different sulci and different fissures which are present in the medulla oblongata see here in the midline you can see one fissure this fissure what we call anterior median fissure this fissure what we call anterior median fissure on either side of the anterior median fissure you can see the elevation this elevation what we call pyramid next lateral to the pyramid you can see one more sulcus here this sulcus what we call anterolateral sulcus anterolateral sulcus or pre olivary sulcus this sulcus what we call anterolateral sulcus or we can also call as pre olivary sulcus next to that you can see the one oval shaped elevation here this oval shaped elevation what we call olive this elevation is formed because of the underlying mass of gray matter that underlying mass of gray matter what we call inferior olivary nucleus behind the olive you can see one more sulcus here this sulcus what we call posterolateral sulcus this sulcus what we call posterolateral sulcus or we can also call as post olivary sulcus this sulcus what we are calling post olivary sulcus behind the post olivary sulcus here one bundle of white matter is there this bundle of white matter is connecting the medulla oblongata with the cerebellum so this structure what we call inferior cerebellar peduncle this structure what we call inferior cerebellar peduncle so if you see the anterior aspect of the medulla oblongata you can see some sulci and some features from medial to lateral side anterior median fissure this anterior median fissure in the lower part it is continuous as anterior median fissure of the spinal cord in the upper part it forms a small depression this depression what we call foramen cecum actually if you observe in the lower part of the medulla oblongata this anterior median fissure is very shallow and it is not appearing properly because of the decussation of the pyramidal tract that means some fibers will be crossing from one side to another side because of that only in the lower part of the medulla oblongata you cannot see anterior median fissure properly next if you coming to the elevation on either side of it this elevation what we call pyramid this pyramid is an elevation this elevation is because of the bundles of the corticospinal tract are passing beneath this elevation because of that only this elevation has been formed next to that pyramid we can see the sulcus this sulcus what we call anterolateral sulcus this sulcus what we call anterolateral sulcus it is present in between the pyramid and olive here you can see the rootlets of nerve see here you can see the some rootlets here these rootlets are the rootlets of 12th cranial nerve or hypoglossal nerve so 
what I am trying to say here, in between the pyramid and alu, nerve fibers are coming, that means nerve is emerging out, this nerve what we call hypoglossal nerve, so here attachment of hypoglossal nerve, right, next if you coming to the alu, this is the alu, 1.5 cm long, oval elevation is there, this oval elevation what we call alu, this alu is formed because of the underlying mass of grey matter, this underlying mass of grey matter what we call inferior olivary nucleus. Next, behind the olive, we can see the sulcus, that means the sulcus which is present in between the olive and the inferior cellular pedicle here. This sulcus what we call postural lateral sulcus. From this postural lateral sulcus, 9, 10, 11, that means cranial part of 11th cranial nerve are emerging out from this sulcus. 12th cranial nerve, 9th cranial nerve, 10th cranial nerve and 11th cranial nerve. These are the nerves which are attaching to the medulla oblongata in the lower part. Then if you see in the upper part, see this is the junction between the pons and the medulla oblongata. This junction what we call pon to medullary junction, pon to medullary junction. If you see the pon to medullary junction, this pon to medullary junction also giving attachment to the some nerves. See here, this is the nerve, it is emerging out in between the pons and the pyramid. This nerve, what we call abdescence nerve or sixth cranial nerve. See, this is the sixth cranial nerve attachment. Then, see here, this is the olive and this is the pons. Here, one more nerve is attaching here. This nerve is facial nerve, which is attaching in between the pons and the olive. This is the facial nerve. This facial nerve is attaching in between the pons and the olive. This is seventh cranial nerve. Next one, see here. This is the angle. That means this is a point where medulla oblongata, pons, and cerebellum is meeting. So this angle, what we call ponto cerebellar angle, or cerebellar pontine angle. This angle, what we call cerebellar pontine angle. So from this cerebellar pontine angle. Actually, it is present at the junction of pons and medulla oblongata. From this angle, one more nerve is arising. This nerve, what we call eighth cranial nerve or vestibulocochlear nerve. Very simple. At the junction of pons and medulla oblongata, some nerves are attached. Those are sixth cranial nerve, that is abdescence nerve, in between the pons and the pyramid. Seventh cranial nerve attaching to the brain stem at the junction of pons and the olive. Then, at the panto cerebellar angle, 8th cranial nerve is attaching here. These are the different nerves which are attaching to the medulla oblongata. I will tell you only nerves now. At the anterolateral sulcus, 12th cranial nerve. At the posterolateral sulcus, 9th cranial nerve, 10th cranial nerve, and 11th cranial nerve. Then, at the panto medullary junction, 6th cranial nerve, in between the pons and pyramid. 7th cranial nerve in between the pons and olive, 8th cranial nerve of course at the ponto medullary junction but it is coming from the angle, that angle what we call ponto cerebellar angle. This is about the anterior aspect of the medulla oblongata. Then we will discuss about the posterior aspect of the medulla oblongata. If you wanted to see the posterior aspect of the medulla oblongata, we have to cut these peduncles, then we have to see from the posterior aspect. I will show this structure in the other specimen. This is the posterior aspect of the medulla oblongata. From here to here, this is the medulla oblongata. If you observe the medulla oblongata in the posterior aspect, from here to here, it is closed part. Closed part means what? This is the central canal. This is the central canal. Actually, this central canal will be continuous down as central canal of spinal cord. This central canal is closed here. In this part, central canal is closed. But if you observe in the upper part, this central canal is opened and forms the fourth ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle. Actually, this is flora of fourth ventricle and this cavity what you call fourth ventricle. That means central canal in the lower part of the medulla oblongata it is closed, and in the upper part of the medulla oblongata it is opened and it forms the fourth ventricle. Like our spinal cord, in the posterior aspect there will be one sulcus. That sulcus what we call posterior median sulcus. This is the posterior median sulcus. 
this posterior median sulcus it will be extending up as posterior median sulcus of the medulla oblongata that means same name no difference so posterior median sulcus of the spinal cord continues up as posterior median sulcus of the medulla oblongata posterior lateral sulcus we have already seen this is a posterior lateral sulcus see here if you see in this specimen this is anterior median fissure this is anterior lateral sulcus this is posterior lateral sulcus that means we have seen the anterior part and the lateral part now we have to see the posterior part see from here to here this is posterior part that means what in between the posterior lateral sulcus to the posterior median sulcus this part what is the posterior part what is anterior part anterior part is present in between the anterior median fissure and the anterior lateral fissure then lateral part is nothing but in between the anterior lateral sulcus and the posterior lateral sulcus this area is lateral part now we are discussing about the posterior part see this is posterior part that means from here to here what are the demarcating point here posterior median fissure in the posterior aspect and the posterior lateral sulcus otherwise we can also call as post olivary sulcus so this part what we call posterior part now we'll see what are the features which are present in the posterior part this posterior part for our convenience further we can divide it into this is the closed part and it is open part no this fissure what we call posterior median fissure okay on either side of the posterior median fissure we can see the elevation here here one elevation here one elevation this elevation what we call gracile tubercle this tubercle what we call gracile tubercle and this gracile tubercle it will be continuous down as an elevation below also this elevation because of the fasciculus gracilis fasciculus gracilis fibers will be ascending up and reaching this tubercle which tubercle is this gracile tubercle and first order neurons will be relaying here second order neurons will start from this point because of that deep to this elevation there will be one nucleus that nucleus what we call gracile nucleus so this is gracile tubercle deep to this nucleus is present that nucleus what we call gracile nucleus if you go dorso lateral to this gracile nucleus here you can see one more elevation this elevation what we call cuneate tubercle this tubercle what we call cuneate tubercle this cuneate tubercle is formed because of the underlying one more nucleus that nucleus what we call cuneate nucleus gracile tubercle because of the gracile nucleus cuneate tubercle because of the cuneate nucleus then if you go little above and lateral to the cuneate tubercle you can see one more tubercle here here this tubercle here this tubercle what we call tuber cinereum tuber cinereum this tuber cinereum is because of underlying mass of gray matter and also white fibers so what is that spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and spinal tract of trigeminal nerve tuber cinereum is formed because of underlying spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and spinal tract of trigeminal nerve okay then this bundle of white matter it is connecting to the cerebellum this is what we call inferior cerebellar peduncle inferior cerebellar peduncle so from above downwards inferior cerebellar peduncle tuber cinereum cuneate tubercle gracile tubercle this is the lower part this is the upper part of the posterior surface of the medulla oblongata shows the triangular area this triangular area is forming the lower part of the flora fourth ventricle actually this is diamond shaped area is there no this diamond shaped area what do you call flora fourth ventricle this flora fourth ventricle is formed above by pons below by medulla oblongata that means lower half is formed by the medulla oblongata in this lower part of the rhomboid fossa or the flora fourth ventricle you can see sulcus in the midline that is what we call median sulcus on either side of the median sulcus you can see one more sulcus here here you can see one more sulcus this sulcus what we call sulcus limitans this sulcus what we call sulcus limitans lateral to sulcus limitans we can found the area called vestibular area in between the sulcus limitans and the median sulcus in between the median sulcus and sulcus limitans we can see elevation here 
this elevation what we call median eminence this elevation what we call median eminence this is sulcus remittance no? this sulcus remittance having a superiorly one depression inferiorly one depression this superior depression what we call superior fovea inferior depression what we call inferior fovea right from the inferior fovea one oblique line will come and divides this median area below the stria medullaris into upper part and the lower part this upper part what we call hypoglossal triangle lower part what we call vagal triangle this upper part what we call hypoglossal triangle lower part what we call vagal triangle so hypoglossal triangle or hypoglossal area contains hypoglossal nucleus vagal triangle contains vagal nucleus actually this vagal triangle further divided by funiculus supperens because of that funiculus supperens is vagal triangle further divided into vagal triangle and the area postrima area postrima is present in between the funiculus supperens and the gracile tubercle here in this area we can see the one area that area what we call area postrima here you can see the area that area what we call area postrima that area postrima contains broken blood brain barrier area postrima doesn't have blood brain barrier that means there will be broken blood brain barrier and it is acting as a vomiting center because this area postrima will be always testing the blood if there is any toxic products present in the blood deep in that area postrima you can found the chemo trigger zone that chemo trigger zone will activates the vagus nerve nucleus which leads to reverse the restaltic movements and which leads to vomiting so this is the area postrima here we can see the lining of ependyma this lining of ependyma this lining of ependyma what we call tenia this is one tenia and this is one tenia these two tenia are uniting at the midpoint and forms a triangular fold the triangular fold what we call obex right so because of the obex because of the area postrima and because of the vagal triangle the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle it is looking like fountain pen nib fountain pen nib because of that this part what we call calamus scriptorius calamus scriptorius if you observe here this is a median fissure no from the median fissure you can see some horizontally running fibers this horizontally running fibers what we are calling stria medullaris in the anterior aspect you can see some other fibers they are crossing the pyramid anterior lateral sulcus and olive then they are entering into the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle these are what we call anterior external arcuate fibers anterior external arcuate fibers connecting the arcuate nucleus which is present anterior to the pyramid that nucleus will be connecting to the cerebellum by some fibers those fibers what we call anterior external arcuate fibers the same fibers they passes through the substance of the medulla oblongata and reaches to the posterior aspect and they crosses to the opposite side and reaching to the opposite cerebellum because of those fibers some transverse ridges or transverse lines you can see these transverse lines what we call stria medullaris stria medullaris so this is about the external features of the medulla oblongata next session we will discuss about the external features of midbrain and parts after completion of external features we have to discuss about the internal features by making the section at three levels at the level of the motor decussation at the level of the sensory decussation at the level of the inferior olivary nucleus